Alright, hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be talking about how to merge sort um, in Java, just the overall concept, and then I'll go code it in IntelliJ. So, merge sort um, is pretty obvious by its name. It's a sorting algorithm. So, it comes from an unsorted array, and then it'll divide, and then it'll merge back to a sorted array. So the standard average, worst case, best case time for merge sort is n log n. It's because it's always going to separate these um, this array into individual arrays and then merge it back. So nothing will be different every time it runs. So what this does is it first divides. So it divides until it gets to a s individual cells. And it does that because individual cells are always sorted. And then it'll use a it'll merge these two sorted arrays back together into one, and then once it gets to the last step, it'll combine them back into the original array. So that's basically the solution. It's written here, but um, to be more specific, to divide, we use indices to divide. So an indice at if so, if the left was at 0 and the right was at 1, basically, you're only going to have 1. So that's how we know whether the array is divided or not. So now we need to get to a more important part, which is to merge. OK, so how to merge two sorted arrays in linear time. So you have 1, 5, 9 here, and then you have 2, 4, 8. And somehow you have to do a algor an algorithm that turns it into 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, 9. So that's what I'm going to talk about right here. OK, so the solution to merging in linear time. To merge the two arrays into a bigger sorted array, each pile will start at the top. And the top cards will be compared. And by the top cards, I mean the uh, values pointing to by the indices. So there's uh, there's obviously going to be um, indices here that point to the top. So these two will be compared. And if a if this one's smaller, then it will get put in. If this one's smaller, then it will get put in. That, so that's what I mean by compared. OK, so then it will move the index of the array that had the value inserted forward so the number does not get repeatedly calculated or compared. And then it will do this until all values have been entered into the big array. The infinite at the end of the array is there to act as a sentinel value. So in this case, if one array runs out of values, it will work because any of the value in any array will be smaller than infinity. Therefore, when the index gets there, the array that isn't empty will always get filled into the bigger merged array. And then um, this is a side note. Again, it takes O n, so it's pretty special. OK, so let's walk through how the code would run in here. So um, obviously, I explained the first case. It takes the 1, and then it'll move the index down to 5. So 2 and 5 gets compared. So 2 gets picked. And then it moves that index down to 4. So 4 obviously gets picked. 5 gets um, moved down. Sorry, 4, this gets moved down to 8. And then 8 gets picked. Sorry, and then 5 gets picked. So that gets moved down to 9. And then 8 gets picked. And then this gets moved down to the infinity. OK, so this is the special case. Any value here, it could be anything. It's going to be smaller than infinity. So See, this array already ran out of values, so therefore this one will just get popped in here. So this is kind of like a deck of cards, because you're kind of um, revealing the top cards of each pile, and then compa um, comparing them, and then putting the smaller one into a bigger pile. So you do that until you run out of cards, in which this case is um, when we get to the infinity signs. And in our program, we can actually calculate how big we need to allocate space for this um, big array. So basically, once we fill this array, we can just exit, and we don't need to we don't need to worry about um, checking for infinities at all. It's just there to make sure that if one array um, becomes empty before the other one, um, 
the other array still gets filled into the bigger merged array. So um, that is basically how to do merge sort. And now go to IntelliJ and then walk through the code. So I have the code here. Um, this is the get array, and then we have a merge sort. Sorry, a merge constructor. The class is called merge. And then there's a instance variable that's a. So I'll, I'll just show you what this code does right now. So obviously right here, there's a unsorted array. And we're going to call this object, basically. And then we're going to tell it to merge sort. And then we'll print the array that gets modified. So let's see what happens. All right. So it sorts it, basically. Nothing too um, exciting or surprising here. But um, let's just go look at the merge sort function. So um, I'll go minimize this window. All right, so this is the merge sort. Um, it's a, It looks a little bit intimidating, but it's not that bad. So I'll just code it from scratch again. OK, so to begin with, remember that there was a mid uh, index to separate the two arrays, because this array is always half. These two arrays um, sizes are always half of this array size. So they will get separated into these and then into these bits. OK, so let's go here. So we have to call an int variable. I'll just call it q. Then um, we'll get into the driver code. So we're going to use recursive calls to separate these. So we have to have a um, condition where the recursive call gets called. And this is um, where p and I, r comes in. So if p is less than r, and I've actually wrote, I've actually already finished a method header, but basically p will be the start of the array, and then r will be the end of the array. So it's just going to make sure that p is always less than r, because we don't want p to be greater than or equal to r. So if p is less than r, we're going to put our q, which is the mid, remember, is um, p plus r divided by 2. All right. So now we're going to divide. This is the dividing part of the algorithm, which is p to q. Oops. Here we go. Then it will also merge q plus 1 to r. OK, so now it has finished merging. Now what we need to do is we need to um, put the values into the array. So what I mean is we need once we need one and six to be filled into the arrays that needs to be merged. So what well, basically this array doesn't come by itself. We make this array. All right. So we have to get the values from the big array in the main, and then we have to put it into these smaller arrays and then we'll merge it and then we'll put it back into the big array okay so that's the basic picture that we want here okay so first we need to determine the size so i'll call the size of the first array m1 and then that's going to be equal to q minus p plus one okay so q minus p what is Q? Q is the midpoint. And P, P is the start. And then we plus 1 because uh, the array is at 0 indexed, basically. And then N2 is equal to R minus Q. All right. And then we can instantiate our new arrays now. So I'll call one the left one, and then I'll call one the right. So it'll be int n1 plus 2 and this plus 2 because we need to accommodate for the infinity sign. Sorry, infinity value, I should say. And then r is equal to new int n2 plus 2. Let's make this look a little better. There we go. So now that we've um, allocated space for this, we need to put values in. So I'll just put index i and then index j. OK, so i is going to be used for r for l. j is going to be used for r. So now we can use a for loop. 
for i is at 1, i is less than or equal to n1, and then i++. plus plus. So this will put values into this position at L. Okay, so L at I is going to be equal to A at P plus 1 minus 1. I actually just realized that we're going to have a space left over, but that's fine. So I'm just going to start everything else at 1, and then it should accommodate for that mistake. So now um, we'll do j at, is at 1, and j is less than or equal to n2, a++. plus plus. So r at j is equal to a at q plus j. Okay, so now we've populated the values, uh, the array, and then now we need to put the infinite value in. So r and i n1 plus 1 is going to be equal to the infinite. And because we're using an int array, the infinite is just going to be integer dot max int. Sorry, dot max value. And then r is going to be at n2 plus 1. And it will also be equal to integer dot max value. Okay, so now that we've added, well, now that we've populated the whole array, we need to go through and do some comparing functions. So I'm going to um, reset i to be 1. Remember, it, it should be 0, but since I like um, made a mistake here, I'll just keep that at 1, and it will still work the right way. So i will be at 1, and j will be at 1. And well, 4 and k is at 1, k is starting at p. And then k is less than or equal to r. k will be adding together. So this is just going to um, merge these two back into the array. And we're actually modifying the array in place. So there's no extra array that we're turning. See, this is void. We're just modifying a in place. OK, so basically, if l at i is smaller than or equal to r at j, a at k will be equal to l at i. Okay, I think that's pretty self-explanatory, and then what i++. Plus plus. That's just basically comparing the top card and putting it into the array, and then moving the indices. And then if that's not the case, then rj is smaller, so a at k will be equal to um, r at j. And then j can plus plus. So once this finishes, that's basically the end of this array and this, um, sorry, this method. And that's how you do merge sort. Let's go back and run the array and see if it works. And it seems like it's sorted again. Um, I'll just add a couple of values randomly. Um, this can be used for, you can modify the code to make it accommodate for doubles or strings, anything. So um, as you can see, it sorts these values, and then it returns it. So that's how you do merge sort. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you can go check out some of my other videos on my channel page. And I hope you like and subscribe.